that he's sending to the public. Basically, that it's all right for men to have sex with men if they are married. I can accept that on one term mm -hmm. if God said it. Yeah. Then I can accept it. Yeah. Now, how can you be a Christian preacher representing Christ, representing the Bible, representing the church that the apostles were in and preach marriage or the justification of physical relation in a manner that none of the prophets nor Jesus nor the apostles said it's all right to do. It, it really is easy for me to, to, to answer, uh, Brother Pastor. All right. The people who ask the questions get the answers to the questions they ask. And gay people have never been the powerful people in history. Never. Okay. And so the conversations that are recorded between Jesus and those who asked questions of him or to whom he was teaching are between people who were uh, regarded as heterosexual. All right. The assumption was that they were as it is in most conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, when I go into a conversation, everyone assumes that I'm uh, uh, non-gay, that I'm, that I'm heterosexual, okay. until they learn to the contrary. That's the nature of our culture. And it is simply not uh, uh, responsible for us to look for that conversation to be had in the Bible when there's no one to speak up for the powerless. For the same reason that women are disrespected in so much of the Bible, because they were powerless. The conversations in the Bible about them were uh, among men. But how can you compare women to two men being married? That's totally different. How do you mean? I, I, I don't understand what you mean. Well, if, if, if I sleep with my wife, I'm complying with the law of God. In the book of Genesis, let's read where the Lord said the desire of the woman should be. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Listen. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Yeah. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire. Your desire. Shall be. Shall be. To thy husband. This was established in the beginning. Right. where the desire should be between two people in a marriage. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you saying that you are justified by having your desire. You're, you're married, I presume. I'm not. I'm you're not, not partnered at all. You and your partner are not married. I do not have a partner. You don't have a partner. Right. But if you get married, you plan on marrying a man or a woman. I would marry a man. You would marry a man. Yes. And represent Christ at the same time. Absolutely. How? Because the Bible says nothing new under the sun, That's right. and you must admit that your teaching and your deeds can't contradict the scripture. How can we just come up with something that's not scriptural? Again, Brother Pastor, it's it's easy for you. It, it is easy. It's easier than it's ever been for me, and it's because, and again, it's just a, it's a, a completely different a, approach to the to the scriptures that that comes out of our experience of being called by God to be in ministry or to be in, in lay service in the church uh, and fully experiencing the love of God in every aspect of our lives, understanding the concept and the reality of God convicting of sin. Now, I've been convicted of some sins in my life, and I've had to change some things. But not that. But not that one. You're not convicted of that? I'm not. I, again, I, you know, my ex entire experience is saying to God, I love you more than I love this sexual thing. I love you, God. So I want to serve you. Having Change sex with me. a man, you don't feel as though you're breaking God's commandment. It's a, for me. It is as beautiful and fulfilling and completing as I hope it is for you and your wife. For me. No, there ain't no comparison there, buddy. <laughs> With all due respect, Brother Pastor, you don't know. With all due respect, you don't know. According to the Bible. No. According to this Bible. What good is you coming up here with the Bible and don't believe what's in there? Oh, I believe it. 
You believe it? I believe it. But I, again, I believe all of it. And, and I have read all of it and studied as much of it as I could, could study with, with help from other people. Because the message of the Bible is one of uh, uh, love from our God more than anything else. And to have sex with men, is that showing the love of God? Well, let me, let me get through what I want to say. Yeah. Love from God is the point. Mm -hmm. Reconciliation to God first and then to each other is the point of the whole book, the entirety of the book. Of course, you'll be able to find a, a scripture here and a scripture there to, to prick me with. And you won't do it out of, out of lack of concern for me. You do it out of Christian love for me. You want to help me get to a different place that you think is better, and I value that. But I read the whole book, and in light of my own experience and the experience of thousands and thousands and millions of other gay Christians around the world who say, Everything about this book tells me that I'm loved of God and that I can be empowered to love my neighbor as, as effectively as I love myself, to reach out in, in, in mutuality and, and concern and care for each other. Does, I can do that. Does the book tell the gay community that their deeds are godly? When a man lay with a man, does anywhere in the book Tell a gay man your deeds in that act is godly. I simply think it's unrealistic to expect folks who didn't understand anything about homosexual orientation in the uh, pre-Christian time and in the, the first and second centuries You're after Christ. They didn't understand it? They didn't understand what we know now. So the gay community have a better understanding than the prophets and the apostles. We are wrestling with the reality of our lives in light of the gospel and, and finding ourselves blessed and, and empowered and encouraged and loved by God. The scripture says this, whatsoever things were written aforetime is written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So if God intended and wanted men to marry men, it would have been written so we can learn it's right. So how, how can you make it special for self? Oh no. And oh, saying no. that you are justified in laying with a man when you're married. How is that act scripturally, scripturally justified? Because see, we got it, God is involved in here. Because just to say that it's justifiable for men to lay with men if you marry, would you convey that message if you got two 16-year-old boys somewhere and the government will permit them to marry wherever they are? You would encourage two young boys or two young men to have sex with one another? I would, I would not encourage people who are too young to have responsible sex to have sex with each other. I, I, so what the age? Sixteen-year-old. What piece, age? Well, a man can lay with a man. I don't know when. <laughs> you know, eighteen works for the for the consensus of the of the uh, uh, country. So eighteen. That, that people should be able to make decisions about whom they would partner with. Regardless of what the Bible said, brother pastor, in light of all that the Bible says. Ignore it. No, in light of That's all. What you're no, I'm not. That's what you tell No, telling I'm not. That's I'm what not. you're telling them. No, I'm not. Dr. Knox, you are telling the people, in despite of what the Bible says, wherever you feel, go for it. No, no, no. That's what, what you're telling No, them. I'm not. What I am saying to you and, and to everyone else who will listen is the Bible encourages us, not encourages, but commands us yes. to love God first right. and other people as ourselves. All right. Now, if I love a potential partner as I love myself, mm -hmm. I would do nothing to dishonor him or hurt him or make him less than human. If, if, and, right. and all that I do with him should be done in the light of my mutual love for him and my love for God, just as I hope 
uh, all of you do in, in heterosexual relationships. And Anne, mm -hmm. uh, to say otherwise, is, uh, that is sin. All right, let me hold you on one statement you made, mm -hmm. that when you be with him, you, won't, you don't do anything to dishonor him. That's correct. Right. Let's compare your statement with the book. Amen. Let's see when he's with the man, is he dishonoring him? Mm -hmm. Even when he's being nice. That's right. Even when he's being consensual. Even when he agreed. Amen. Let's see, is that the act of dishonor? Romans chapter 1 and at verse 24. Listen. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness. Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness. You better go up to verse 22. At verse 22. You see, I just believe all the book. That's right. And if we're going to believe what's in the book, it's the purpose of, you know, you go to churches, preachers, you know, they claim they got Bibles up on the podium. If you're not going to believe what's in there, there's no need to have it up there. That's right. Listen closely. Proverbs, uh, rather Romans chapter 1 and verse 22. Listen. Professing themselves to be wise, yeah. they became fools. What is it? And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God uh -huh. into an image made like to corruptible man. Yeah. And the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up. To what? To uncleanness. Now. Bible establishing an act that's unclean. Mm -hmm. All right? Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness uh -huh. through the lust of their own hearts. The lust, the desires of their own wants, their heart. To dishonor. To dishonor. Their own bodies. Their own bodies. Between themselves. Between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. Holy. The truth is the woman was made for the man. That's right. That's the truth. And the scripture says, you seek to change it. Change it, that's right. Now, if you're changing it, you're making man for man, woman for woman. The scripture says they seek to change the truth. Of God. Of God. Into a lie. Into a lie. Amen. Listen. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves, mm -hmm. who change the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. Who is what? Who is blessed forever, amen. As a result of that, what did God say? For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection. What is that vile affection that God is speaking of? For even their women did change the natural use into that which Hold is... Hold it. What is the natural use? Amen. The natural use for the woman is what? The man. Amen. Man. And the scripture dealing with changing natural use. That's right. Listen. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. <laughs> against nature. That's written. Do you believe that? That if a man loveth the man or a woman with a woman, it's against nature. I do not believe it. So this is a lie. That is not true. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. That's what Be you're doing. Because I don't believe that the Apostle Paul had any concept, any concept. Paul? Paul had mean, any concept. Uh, no, no, let me finish. Go ahead, go ahead and finish, Doc. Uh, let, me, let me tell you one thing first and foremost. I'm not a... I'm not a, a doctor of ministry or a PhD. I don't oh. know where we decided I was Dr. Knox. I appreciate the honor, but it's not due me. I didn't earn it. How about it. just Harry? Good old Harry would be right. fine. <laughs> All right, come on. Paul did not have any idea of the, the kind of love that I feel for a partner when I am partnered. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't know what that was about. Now, it, you know, it's easy for you to laugh it off because for you it seems most natural. It is for you natural. No, you know, no, wait, no, 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 come on now, come on. I don't want you to misinterpret what I'm laughing about. Well, I, I don't take it personally. I don't, I don't hear you laughing at me, but, but, but let me say this. All right, go ahead. You consider it unnatural because it's not natural for you. It ain't natural for God. Oh, the straight man, the heterosexual man who got the privilege of writing the book, the educated, rich, heterosexual man, Paul, who got to write the book, mm -hmm. didn't think it was natural, because for him, it must not have been. So you see he wrote it on his own? I'm telling you, for me, it is natural. All right. And when, that, when those two things disagree, 
when my experience, not outside of the love of God, but inside the love of God and constant companionship with God, constant talking with God about it, begging God to make it different. If it's wrong, God, everybody else says it is, and I don't want to do this. Change me. Not being changed. Not even being changed a little but in fact being embraced by the love that says, I made you this way. And he's all right to do it. And it, not only all right, it's God's will. It's God's will for you it's to lay God's with a man. Will. For me saying. to lay with a man if he and I love each other and care for each other and are committed to each other. All right, now, now I have to say, I, I wish I could say, I wish it were as easy as turning to my book in the Bible that was written by one of my people you know, that was, that was uh, uh, written to really address this issue. I wish it were that easy. So you're saying that Paul was just closed-minded and just didn't have no understanding about gay issues at all. I totally I, disagree. Amen. Because the book says this. Give me the book of uh, Romans. Let's see how the scriptures come about. Amen. The book tells us, in fact, it lets us know, we're going to go to Romans, then we're going to go to Peter. That all scripture, all of the scripture, not some of it, but all scripture are given by the inspiration of God. And it's on, listen at this. In 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And at verse 16. And verse 16. All scripture. How much? All scripture. All scripture, how they come about? Is given by inspiration of God. It ain't talking about a bunch of rich men, a bunch of male chauvinist men, right. or heterosexual. That was irrelevant. That's right. It says all scripture are given by the inspiration of God. And when we use the inspired scripture, what do we formulate? And it's profitable for doctrine. When you stick with the scriptures, your doctrine will be right. For reproof. Yeah. Your reproof will be correct. For correction. What? For correction. Correction. Yeah. What else? For instruction. Instruction. In righteousness. In what's right. That the man of God may be perfect. Complete. Thoroughly furnished well, unto so, all good works. So Paul didn't write that on his own. You can't say that Paul wrote it on his own. He was divinely inspired. Knowing this first. The Bible said knowing this first. In 2 Peter chapter uh, 1 and verse 20. Listen. Knowing this first. I, this is the first thing that God wants you to know. Knowing this first. That what? That no prophecy of the scripture. No prophecy. No prophecy. Nothing written in the scriptures. Is of any private interpretation. So you can't say Paul wrote it on his own. Now, Brother Pastor. The last thing that I would say about Paul was that he was not inspired by God and a, and a man of God and that the words that he wrote were put down for our uh, use and edification, not our use on our own behalf, but for God's use in telling us how to live our lives. So, you and I agree about that. Now, yes, let, me, yes, let, me, let me have my turn. Go ahead, brother. There are so many scriptures in the Bible that are contradictory to other things in the Bible or for which we feel we ha or beyond which we feel we have grown in our understanding of a simplistic interpretation mm -hmm. let me ask you if you're going to condemn my folks to hell now this is serious business this is not just you and I disagree about a political topic or something like that you and I understand that the 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 the, the stakes are the highest mm -hmm. if you're going to tell me that my people are going to hell based on uh, these things, which again I gave other uh, information about that is not as simplistic as how you've laid it out But here. before you lay but, it on me, see but, if no, I'm going to tell no, you. I want to ask you. Out of it. No, I want to ask you. Because uh, it's important to remember. Okay. What do you say about a scripture that says, slaves obey your masters? Mm -hmm. It's simple. It's to the point. It's clear. Mm -hmm. What, what do you say about something like that? Let me give you some other examples. I don't want you, I'm sure you got an answer to that one, but let me yeah, give you some I others, do. I'm sure. <laughs> now, let me give you some others. Yeah. What do you say to the holiness code when it says, don't eat lobsters and shrimp? Yeah. It's an abomination. Mm -hmm. What do you say to the holiness code when it says, don't have sex with your wife who you love when she's menstruating? Mm -hmm. It's an abomination. Mm -hmm. What do you say 
Uh, Anything you, know, you pitch, to, we can do. Okay. I mean, all of those things, uh, you, I believe, I don't want to pitch them at you by way of embarrassing you or making you lose a point in this debate. Okay. I'm, not, I don't, I, I'm not trying to embarrass you. I, I, well, I know, but, but, okay. but, but what I say to you about that is this. Why I say it is this. You, I believe you have to hear all of those texts in light of everything else is in, that's in the book, mm -hmm. that's in the Bible. All of the messages of God standing on the, on the, the side of people who are misunderstood or powerless or strangers. All of the things that, that, that the Bible says about Jesus' decisions to eat with people who were sinners right. and, and not to justify their sin, I don't say that, but you know, to, to say to people, come and be with me. Exactly. You know, uh, I know you're not understood by everybody else, but I understand you. Mm -hmm. what, all of that has to be a part of the mix. The love of God, the, the, not just the condemnation of sin, God will convict us if, if, if we're wrong, God will convict us in our hearts. The other piece that for me is a proof, not just what's in the text, the so other you're things you don't that are. Take what's just in the scriptures. No, I don't. What, and, what, and, I, and you and I probably disagree about you this. You go outside I'm of the scriptures to justify yourself? I, I justify things that I believe in f through four different things. What are they? The scriptures are first, always. The tradition of the church what we have learned from being the body of Christ together for many, many centuries. Mm -hmm. My experience, my experience, I believe, is a gift of God to me and to all of us. And God says that it is. Mm -hmm. And the reason that God has given me, the, the ability to reason and think things through. All four of those things from my tradition, the Wesleyan tradition, the United Methodist tradition in which I grew up, have value, not equal, not equal. The scriptures are more important. The, the spirit is more important than experience or reason. But all of those things are important. And it's just not kind, finally, well, you for people who, yourself. I'm not. If you're saying the scriptures is more important than more all important. the things that you just mentioned, then why do you diminish the importance of the scriptures I don't diminish by saying it. you don't believe them? I, oh, I don't. I don't say that. What I'm saying is when I studied Romans, I didn't stop with 126 and 27. We're not going to stop. I went through the whole thing. You yeah. know, when I studied Leviticus 18:22, I studied the whole holiness code. Yeah. And what I learned about it was God calls us to be special and chosen to be to live differently from the people who are not believers You're around saying us. You're God have chosen the gay community to live differently? No, by us I mean believers. All, all of us who are Christians. So a, a Christian is supposed to live their life like Christ? As much as we can, sure. So if we're going to strive to live like Christ, was Christ gay? Christ was not married. Christ, you know, Christ, as far as I can tell in the scriptures, never had sex with anyone. Does we don't know that. Does the scripture say, does the scripture teach that Christ will marry the church? It does. It's, it does. Is the church called wife? Uh, yes, by authors, again, by authors who understood a, a, a male-dominated society, so I, I, with which I, I simply don't think the if Bible takes... If you want to deal with Christ Marion, we can deal with that. The scriptures talk about how Christ will present unto himself a glorious church, right. and it compared the presentation of the church to Christ, Christ. and compared to the presentation of Eve to Adam, does it not? It does. So if it was God's will for men to sleep with men, for the Christian community that are looking, mm -hmm. to the gay community that are listening and watching, all we're asking is if, if it's God's will, and if it's justified by heaven, because there is no greater justification than what comes from heaven. Yeah. That's right. Then let us go to the scriptures and see where do God justify us. You keep telling me that this is... Uh, I feel as though, I feel as though, give me the prophet Isaiah. Mm -hmm. I want to compare his feelings with God's feelings. Mm -hmm. I want to compare his thoughts with God's thoughts. Amen. I want to see does God feel about things the way he does. That's right. Let's listen to what God said. Yeah. Amen. God Almighty said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Are not. Are not. Isaiah chapter 55. 55. Isaiah chapter 55, and we'll begin at verse 7. Listen. Let the wicked forsake his way. You hear that? 
Let the wicked leave his way. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. Now you're referring to your thoughts and saying that you think that you're justified to do this. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, forsake your thoughts. That's right. Listen. And let him return unto the Lord. Go to the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And he'll be merciful unto you. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Yeah. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. God don't think like you do. Let me, let me give you Jesus' word on this. In, in Luke 12, the Pharisees come at him with this kind of an argument. Okay. They're going to try to trick him. They're going to try to trip him up. All right. And he tells them a parable. Mm -hmm. And then finally in frustration, it's, it's clear from the way that the text is written, he looks at him and he says, why don't you just judge for your... Everything Christ intends to say, Christ has not yet said. I don't believe it. I see the evidence. I see the evidence in the early church. Mm -hmm. Let me go to the Bible. Let me take my little proof text. I go to Acts 10. Right. I go to Acts 15. Mm -hmm. And people there have this kind of conversation with each other. And the, and the Jewish Christians, the Jerusalem Christians say, it's clear in the book. It's clear in the book. You must be circumcised. You must be. Mm -hmm. You cannot eat all of these certain kinds of foods. It's clear in the book. And they, they do this kind of conversation. And Peter stands up and he says, Friends, it just doesn't match with my experience of Cornelius. And Paul and Barnabas come down from Antioch and, and, and Cilicia and they say, it doesn't match with our experience there. Mm -hmm. The Gentiles are filled with the Holy Spirit. You can't believe the work that's going on there. And they're so excited about it that the, 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 the Jerusalem church picks up a delegation and they send them off to Cilicia and Syria and, and, and Antioch to see the great things that are happening. Now, for the pastor, <laughs> Jesus says, why don't you decide for yourself? We've given you all of this mm -hmm. teaching. All of it. And you're going to be better than I am at finding another text, another text, another text. You are. I'm telling you. What's the job of in, the minister? Isn't it, the job of the minister is to point the people to the scriptures? It is. It and is I, our job to get up and give opinions and personal views, how we feel as though, what should be, what shouldn't be. If we say we're ministers of Christ, it is our job to take the people to the scriptures so they can believe. It is, but it's also our job. It is also clearly our job to invite the Holy Spirit into the, into the mix, into the conversation. Well, if I'm in the scripture it, and I'm dealing with the Holy Spirit, Jesus said the words that I speak you are you, they spirit. are spirit and they you are life. Are, but you, but I, you and I simply disagree if you believe that the Spirit stopped speaking when the Roman church decided in the fourth century that this was the book we were going to have. God did not stop. No, no, no. God did not stop speaking to us, though. God, in the tradition of the church, mm -hmm. said to us, this is enough now. It's not everything. It's not every single word it does. It says there's all that you need here. That's how I hear the text that, that you had read. All right. Everything you need is here. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to say we prescribe these things for every issue. I've got a prescription for every single thing that's going to come up. What it says is, and Jesus in his great promise as, as he's ready to ascend says, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm not going to leave you to your own devices 
And I'm not going to leave you just with what you've got by way of scripture to lean back on. Because the people he was talking to didn't even have the scriptures at that time. So what did Jesus left for? The Comforter, the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, the Comforter. And he said, look, it's here. I am, not it, I he am the here spirit, right? through the Spirit. And I'm telling you, Brother uh, Pastor, yes. <laughs> I hear the love that you have for gay people and your call to repentance. I hear it. I feel it. You and I have talked before today. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't confident in, in your concern for all of us. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't be here. I simply wouldn't have dignified the meeting with my, with my presence, you know. But Jesus has been talking to us. And we're bringing you a message like Paul brought, well, like please, Peter brought to the... Please read to us what Jesus is telling y'all. Paul and Peter... Read it to us. I'm That's telling, all I'm at you. Listen to what I'm saying. Paul and Peter didn't have a text to read either. Well, they well, said the thing to, is, they they're said not here to the now. I know. You're here. The scriptures they, are already written. So if Jesus is talking to you, and to say Paul them didn't have a text, yes, they did. They had the prophets. That's right. They did. They had the prophets, and it was written. They did. Now, if you say Jesus is talking to you now, then please show the world where Jesus is talking to you from. He's talking to me from the entirety of the book, Brother Pastor. All from right. the entirety so of the book. Did he say anything to you that it was all right for you to lay with the man somewhere in the book? Being that he's talking to you from the entirety of the book, right. just show me one little section of the book and let Jesus talk. Amen. Jesus talk. Him. Harry. I'm saying to you, Brother Pastor. I want to hear him, Harry. Brother Pastor, I do not, I, I cannot point to a place in the book, and I would not presume to tell you that I could. Then how can you just talk about God so loosely and then say that it is justified in God's eyes? How can you say that about God? Uh, Listen, I, this is very serious. It man. is very Harry, serious. God is not a man. That's right. And we right. can't deal with him like he is a man. That's right. So how That's can right. you just say, well, God is pleased with me? How do you know? The Bible said prove all things. Oh, That's right. And the scripture called this an infallible proof. proof. Wow. So you just can't off the wall and say, well... It's all right with God. How do we know? Yeah. This, uh, Brother Pastor. Come on, Harry. You got to do my, better than that. My, I, I, I'm Your doing, soul is at stake. My here. soul is at stake, and I have staked my soul on this, on what I'm about to say to you. All right. I've read the whole book. Understandest what thou readest? I have read the whole book. Mm -hmm. I have sought understanding. I haven't stopped with just the English translation. I haven't stopped with just what my, my one pastor said you to read me. Greek? I, I read enough of it to make it work. Does, not, does Greek justify men with men? What Greek, what Greek says to me is that the places in the book that, that are used against us are not as clear as a lot of people want to make them out to be. Now, I said, in the Leviticus Code, it's clear, mm -hmm. but it was a matter of purity for the Jews for which we simply don't ask people, we, or about which we don't ask people to live up anymore, to which we don't ask people to live up anymore to all of those, that long list of things. So we're going to deal with one thing. Well, but you're dealing with the thing that applies to me and not to you. No, now, no, now you know, Pastor Jennings, I've got to come back and say, yeah. we have to hear this in community. This message has to be heard in community with our brothers and sisters. Where the message is going to come from? The message is going to come from the book. Where? From the whole book. Where? I don't, well, we must, be, we must be on a circuitous route. Let's, let's back up. I am not saying to you that non-gay people, that heterosexual people mm -hmm. who didn't have an understanding of what homosexual orientation is or is about, sat down and included us in the book. They simply did not. You're not in the book. The, in the book. Not, not, in, not, in the not specifically. Book. No? Not specifically. All right. As, no, by right. that I mean to justify uh, sexual activity between men. I'm not going to say that it's there. Well, what I'm saying to you is there are more overriding principles in the book that we use for every other topic under the sun except this one. 
the church is holding gay people to a higher standard, a different standard, oh, 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 than it is oh, oh, oh. on I, I lots disagree. of other issues. How is, how are you being held to a different standard? The standard of God was woman made for the man. That's right. That was God's standard. You're trying to produce and uphold a different standard. Right. I'm trying to just deal with the standard that God have already established. You and your community is trying to bring about, in fact, Paul said to change mm -hmm. that which is against nature. You're trying to change it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if it's God's will, mm -hmm. then it should be all right for me to do it. it it's, well, it should be all right for you to do it if it's natural for you to do it. If it is it is well, your if it, orientation. If, if it's natural, wouldn't, wouldn't God have allowed natural men mm -hmm. in the book to do such an act? Because you must admit, everywhere in the book where the act is done, God wants to destroy them. God yeah. is against it. God sent the prophets or an apostle or a messenger to speak out against it. That's right. Where in the... All right, I'll tell you what. Being that you just don't want to deal with the Bible, let's deal with other books. Right. You familiar with the Quran? I'm not. All right. Well, the Jews use the Old Testament, the Torah. You familiar with that? Uh -huh. Is there any way in the Torah, or as the many Christians say today, the Gospels, where it is God's will, where you are justified by heaven, and where you will be saved? for marrying a man and for sleeping with the man. I, again, Brother Pastor, we simply disagree about it's the It's not approach. an abomination. Paul said, if you're going to live by the jot and tittle of the law, you're going to miss the point. God's law is love. And if you say to someone who is as constitutionally homosexual, Mm -hmm. as you are constitutionally heterosexual. Harry, you simply can't do it because I can't find you anywhere in the book. And I can find a couple of places where uh, non-gay people made the rules, interpreted the will of God, and they wrote something down in here. And it, I know it's not really about you, Harry. You know, I, I, I don't dispute that uh, the impurity comes from having done these acts in front of idols in the Old Testament. Those texts are about horrible, vile things that were done in front of idols. They don't have any reference, and this is what I mean when I say they don't mean homosexuality. They don't have any reference to a loving, mutually consensual relationship. That's not addressed in the book. That is not condemned in the book. That's, I now, disagree. Well, okay, but let me, let me finish out. We, we do disagree about that. Because I can show you otherwise. Uh, you You're talking about a loving, mutual relationship, a justifiable relationship. Mm -hmm. The only justifiable relationship in the scriptures, the scriptures plainly say, let me ask you something. Was man made for the man? Uh, <laughs> Come on, Harry. In my, in my experience, there were some who were right. made for man. For your experience. In now let's deal with the higher mind. God. God. You love God, Harry? I love him. You love him? I love him. You want to live for him? More than anything else. Are you willing to die for him? I have been close to it, yes. All right. Now, let's eliminate your mind and my mind. Right. The mind of God. Mm -hmm. Did God make man for man? Or did he create the woman for the man? Pastor. <laughs> Come on, Harry. You're, shout you're shouting at me now. Hmm? You're shouting at me, and I'm telling you, in all Christian love, yes. in all Christian love, yes, Harry. and in all respect for the text, mm -hmm. I know something that the people who wrote the text simply didn't know. Let's now, talk, uh, now, now, okay. it doesn't, you know, I, I you understand. You know something that they don't know. That's right. You deeper than them. On one topic that is true for me and for millions of the like, others like You're me. You're deeper than the prophets. I, we, simply than the have, we simply have a different, we have a different knowledge. Come back than, and answer than my we question, did Brother Harry. Right. I don't hurry your mind. Hmm? That's, that's referred to the mind of God. Amen. Right. I ask you, Dick, 
Did God make man for the man? Or did God make woman for the man? Eliminate personal feeling. I feel as though. Let's eliminate my feelings and yours. I, I simply think that's a false choice, Pastor. A false choice? It's a false talk choice. talk about God? Come it's, on, Harry. It's a false choice. You're making me shout. <laughs> <laughs> it's a false choice. And here's why. And here's why. You are asking me, you are asking me if according to the book, if, the, if you're according to the book, if that was my only source of information, is man made for woman? But you got a source. I would where say God yes. Is that I, of the book? I say to you that God has given us all two gifts that we that we dare not throw back at God. Two gifts. What two I? gifts: the Holy Spirit uh -huh. and our own experience and reason. Mm -hmm. Now, are they more important than what's in the book? No. Then why do you keep bringing them up? Because they are as important as is in the book, as as the book, and so I would and the more book just as important as God's and the thinking. book speaks to them both. It is an entirety of relationship with God that I call my Christians, bro my brothers and sisters, to experience. Listen to what you just said. An entire experience with God that's not about a list of rules, a list of rules but a list of guidelines that are given to us in love with the help of the teacher offered us every day. Every day. The teacher? The teacher, Christ, Jesus, well, through the Spirit. Through the Spirit? He's going to teach us through the text and the Spirit and our experience well, the Spirit and our lead reason. Will you any direction that contradicts Scripture? If I believed that it contradicted Scripture in its entirety, Brother Pastor, I would still be on my knees about this thing, now, Harry, you begging, for, you, begging for forgiveness. Do you believe the Holy Spirit will lead us to go against Scripture in any form? I, I don't. I simply don't believe that what I do does that. Even though the Scripture plainly states mm -hmm. that let a man leave father and mother and cleave to his wife, to his wife can a man be a wife? No. So, if a man cannot be a wife, if a man cannot be a wife and two men get married, is husband and husband? <laughs> Bring it up, Harry. In our, in our, uh, it is, uh, in our, In our experience in the gay community, we, we wrestle with language all the time. Okay. And we don't often use, we don't always use husband and husband or wife and wife. Some of us do, some of us don't. Okay. Others uh, believe the word partner to be better because we understand that this is not about domination of one person over another, and that is the source of the word husband, for instance. There's a lot involved in this. To husband is to care for and to own. And to protect. And to protect and mm -hmm. to do all of those things. But that's not our view of, what the, of where the Bible talks about uh, what marriage ought to look like, what relationship ought to look like. We believe now that, uh, again, in the entirety of the book and in the entirety of our experience and in all that we have learned, mm -hmm. women should not be subject to men uh, exclusively. But we ain't talking about women. We talking about two men and, here. And you're asking me about a definition of marriage and wife. And you said, is a man, can a man be a wife? And I would say to you, I don't want to be another man's wife and I don't want a wife. I want a mutual partner. If the word wife is about subjugation, being beneath, and being a servant to. I'm just not looking for that in a relationship. Is marriage sanctioned by God? I believe that it is. All marriage is sanctioned by God? As opposed to what? If the marriage contradicts the principle of scriptural law, would you say is sanctioned by God? Well, again, I, I just think it's a circuitous argument. Of course, really I think. don't believe the scriptures. I believe them. And I believe no. all of them. I listen to all of them. And I hear with equal authority, with equal authority, How can you say a scripture that? that says, let no man call unclean what God calls clean. Is, did God ever call your act clean? I'm telling you, he has told me so in my experience and in the experience of 
millions of you. other Christian believers who are homosexual. So you mean to tell me you're the only person in this building nope. that God told what you do is clean? Well, I don't know the hearts and minds and, and the experience of... Did anybody else in here, God, tell it was clean? God told you it was clean, sir? Yes. He told you that if what Harry do, if he live with the man, is to clean. Yes. clean okay. Let's see what the Bible says. Proverbs chapter 16 and at verse 2. What is it? All the ways of a man what is it? are clean in his own eyes. But the Lord... But the Lord, but the Lord, weigh the spirits. That's the problem. Say, say the last again. I honestly the didn't Lord hear. The Lord weigh the spirits. spirits. That's right. Now, if we have the same spirit of faith, do you, do you feel as though you have the same spirit as the brothers and sisters had in the scriptures? The spirit of God. The proceeding has been a religious discussion between Pastor Gino Jennings of the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ and Harry Knox of the Freedom to Marry organization. The subject, is it God's will that men should marry men and have sexual intercourse? What is clear about that text is that they came to insult and humiliate those people ah. through sex in public and through humiliating rape. When, they, when all of the men of a city show up at the door and say, send these two guys out, <laughs> we want to have sex with them. They